Hi all, it's Lance here with Rainbow Guys DIY. Uh, welcome back and thank you for joining us today. We are going to do something a little out of the ordinary for us. Um, we are going to talk about houseplant pest control. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different pests that can plague your houseplants. Uh, right now I've got a really bad case of uh, what's called scale. Um, which there's a few different types of scale insects and I'm not going to try and list a compendium of all the different pests that you can encounter. Um, probably the main ones that you're going to run into are aphids, spider mites, and mealybugs. Those are the three main ones that you'll probably run across if you're keeping plants indoors. Um, these are very prolific insects. They're not hard to kill, but because they are so prolific, they can pop right back up if you didn't get all of them all at once. Um, and that's what I'm going to try and do today with this um, variegated pink lemon tree that, call me a fool please, because this is number three, maybe number four. Sure, I think it's my third attempt at keeping a citrus indoors. And I am refusing to let it die, although all good rational thought in me tells me it's time to let it go. It is really swamped with scale insects right now. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the different ways you can fight pests. A couple different ways you can help to prevent them. That's probably the best way to go about this. Um, but there are a few different ways to fight your uh, pests on your house plants. Um, I'll get started talking about some different uh, chemical treatments that you probably already have in your house um, and a couple of things that you might have to go to the store for. Um, but I'll start with the simplest and honestly probably the most effective, at least in my past experience. Um, I've got them all laid out here and we'll just kind of start with what I bet most of you already have at home. Um, let me get some of these out of the way. The first thing I want to talk about here um, is the Dawn Classic Original Blue Dish Soap. Um, I, it is my go-to. It is what I use for everything inside, outdoors. Um, it is not organic. It is a synthetic chemical. But it's what I like to consider a benign chemical. It's not going to pollute the waterways. It's not going to cause long-term damage to your outdoor gardens. This is a citrus tree that I hope to one day actually get fruit off of. So I am not going to be using something that I don't feel comfortable in the residual terms entering my body as food. And I'm beyond comfort. I mean, we wash our dishes with this. We wash our hands with it. I do want to specify the original blue dish soap. Don't get the platinum. Don't get the pink stuff that's like got the oil will lay in it. Um, that, you know, is good for your hands or whatever. Um, don't get any of the special scents, but you don't want to use anything that has um, synthetic fragrances in it or any additional weirdness in it. Um, I'll be using a little bit of this on the tree here. Um, and I've already mixed up what I'm going to be using, so I'm going to move this out of the way. Oh. The next one that I bet a whole bunch of you have, if not all of you have, somewhere in your house, either underneath the kitchen sink or in the bathroom, is um, rubbing alcohol. Now this is labeled as isopropyl alcohol, which is just the formal fancy way of saying rubbing alcohol. Uh, this comes in very drinks. This, as you saw on the label, is 70%, uh, which means it's 70% isopropyl alcohol and 30% water. Um, you can get this all the way from 100%, so pure alcohol, which is actually flammable. I think the lowest percentage I've seen is like 3%. So you can get it in different dilution ratios. Um, this was just what I happened to pick up off the counter at the store one day. I'm going to set this aside. Monterey neem oil. Um, this is Monterey's brand, I think. Yes. Um, they also like the osteopropyl alcohol. It also comes in different strengths. Um, this is the 70%. Um, this is probably one of the biggest go-to 
pest control substances in the houseplant and garden world. Um, it is incredibly effective. I use it as much as a preventative measure as I do as a control. It is organic. It's actually labeled by OMRI, which means it is derived from natural ingredients and it is certified as organic. And that means that it's safe to use in food grade plants. I use this inside and outside. The other thing that I was going to warn you about with this, it smells, it smells bad. It is such an abomination of, of fragrance that do this, when you use this, spray it at night so that when you're done you can go to another room. The thing with this, again, much like the rubbing alcohol, make sure you dilute it when you do use it, um, unless it's already to use, in which case, obviously, it's called that for a reason. Um, but if you have 100% or 70% or even, I think the lowest I've seen is like 32%. Yeah, like 32%, I think. Um, whatever strength you get, there are going to be directions on the back, and it will tell you what strength to use for what type of application. Um, when it comes to things like any of these, really, neem oil, uh, rubbing alcohol, dish soap, whatever you're using, less is more. Because you can always reapply more. You can always come back the next day. You can always come back in a week and say, oh, that didn't really do the trick. I need to use more. I need to use a higher concentration. Use a lower concentration to start with. And then if it doesn't work, bump it up. Um, I think that's the three actual substances. Oh, no, there is a fourth. There's a fourth one. I'm going to go get it. I'll be right back. So I mentioned a fourth item to use to help fight your houseplant pests. Here's a good one. Oh, my heart just stopped a little bit because the leaves are starting to fall. That's always a bad sign with houseplants. The fourth um, substance you can use here is what's called diatomaceous earth, or DE for short. Um, that's Delta Echo. It is made basically from ground-up seashells. Um, or diatoms, they are, if you actually hold it in your hand, it is the finest, siltiest powder um, that you will ever touch. It is really only useful on plants that don't need a lot of water. If you're going to use it on something like a phytonia or a fern, don't, you're wasting your time. Um, the moment it gets wet, it stops being effective. And the reason for that is, unlike the other substances that I mentioned, um, which work on a chemical pesticidal level, this works on a physical level. It literally chokes the insects. It gets inside their air vents. Um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with insect anatomy. I'm not, I don't know what the word is. A specialist for plants. I am not an insect enthusiast, so I don't know what they're called, but it plugs the vents that they breathe through along their sides. So it works basically on contact, and it works on hard body scale insects. So it works really well for gnats and flies. It does work okay for aphids. It's not the best for scale insects when they are on the plant, but I am going to use the DE on the top of the soil when I'm done, and you'll see why um, when I get to the next step. So this is another option available to you. You can use this on the leaves of the plants. It is very messy when you do it that way, um, and you'll waste more than you actually get on the leaves, but it can be effective if you have the beginning stages of spider mites. It can be very effective because they like to be dry and because they have tiny little hard bodies. You do want to make sure that you are getting a brand or a, a package that is labeled specifically towards um, insect control, because there are different grades of diatomaceous earth. There's food grade, which I don't know what you would use it in, um, in the kitchen, but that's allegedly the safest. But this is good for 
um, pest control. There's a, a, I don't know if it's an old wives tale, and I really don't like that expression. There's a really good home flea remedy where after you've done the flea stuff on the dogs, you can actually use this on like carpets and upholstery, things you can't get into a, a washing machine. Um, sprinkle this in your carpets and your upholstery and it gets rid of fleas really well. At least I have heard. Now I'm going to show you a couple different applications of these different things we've done. I'm going to start with the isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to use Q-tips and the rubbing alcohol. And I just grabbed a little bowl because it's getting a little low. And rather than trying to dip like the little Q-tip in here, I just... And we'll get started on this. And then I will uh, join you back when I'm done with that. And I'm going to get a good close-up. There's a few spots that are really, really bad. So I want you to see those really up close if I can. Uh, I might have to rotate this just a little bit. So let's see here. I've got my little dish of isopropyl alcohol. So we're just going to dip the Q-tip in the rubbing alcohol. And then you're just going to gently scrape off the bugs that you can see. I find a Q-tip is probably the most effective because it will actually like catch the little bugs scale and the scale family of insects, which includes mealybugs, they feed in a very interesting manner. They actually are not terribly nimble. They are not mobile in the best of ways. They will actually latch themselves onto a stem and grow sort of a shell or a scale, hence the name. Now, you do want to be quite thorough with these. One thing you want to be mindful of, and this is where the DE is going to come in handy, is a lot of these are going to just fall into the soil, and coincidentally, that's also where they lay their eggs, is in the soil. And so, you definitely want to make sure that you get some sort of pest control into the soil as much as the actual plant. Alright, so this is the very top branch, and this is by far probably the worst. And the reason for that is this is where all of the fresh, greenest, growth is. I'm going to show you the bowl of rubbing alcohol and kind of the leftovers. It's not going to focus because they're so, so tiny. Ugh, gross. We've done the first step where we have physically removed what we can of the scale insects and you're not going to get all of them. That's why we use a multi-prong approach to pest control. We've got step one done, we're going to move on to step two, and I brought these two additional plants here to uh, demonstrate on because you can't see the leaves on this terribly well. Um, so I've got the spray bottle, and I got this at either Home Depot or one of the local nurseries. Um, I think it was like $16 or $17. It's... it's Good if you do, if you have a lot of plants and you have a lot of expensive plants and you have pest problems consistently, uh, because it sprays a lot and it will hold a lot. Um, it's really simple. You literally just press that down a couple times. You can turn the nozzle here and that will tell it how wide a spray to use. Um, and then it just has a trigger on the back, the black trigger here. And you can get other sprayers too. This is just what I use. I used to have this one, um, I actually had two, one just for regular water misting and then one for pest control spritzing. Um, and I got them, I think at the dollar store, you get them in the cosmetics aisle, and you just unscrew the lid, put the liquid in, and <laughs> you can get really nice, fancy, kind of artistic looking, expensive, um, glass spray bottles that have like the brass fixture and, and they're cute, precious waste of time in my opinion. I have things to do. And you can get like super fancy like electric powered, battery powered um, sprayers if you have any sort of like maybe a commercial setting more than just the typical house plant grower. So I brought these two plants in to kind of demonstrate the spraying um, because this is probably an extremely common plant that many of you probably have, and you have probably dealt with spider mites on this. It is a Dracaena marginata, and 
you can tell that because it has a predominantly green leaf, as plants are wont to do, and then it has these really nice pink red stripes sort of at the edges of the leaf. It's also called the uh, the dragon tree. You probably have some sort of dracaena, either lucky bamboo, which is, fun fact, not actually bamboo, it is a type of dracaena, um, or you might have a dracaena, dracaena janet craig. So chances are you have this plant, have dealt with spider mites on this plant. It is possible to defeat them, I assure you. And then this plant over here is, the common name is Chinese evergreen, but I always hate common names because they vary so regionally. Uh, but it's an aglaonema. And I have another one that was actually a gift from a friend um, that's a silver queen. This one, I'm not sure what its pest susceptibilities are, honestly. The other one I've had, it it's done beautifully. Nothing um, has gone after it. Honestly, most of my plants are pretty good. So for the actual solution that you're going to be spraying, um, there's probably some reason out there that you shouldn't mix neem oil and dish soap or neem oil and other pesticides. And I'm sure, like, if you were to get, like, some aggressive artificial pesticide, you'd be like, do not mix this with anything or you'll give everyone in a 100-mile radius cancer. Um, but I haven't really seen anything that says, don't mix these two. And I'm going to spray both of them, so why don't I just save myself time um, if that's a bad idea, I would love to know because I've been doing that for a long time. Um, and I do it outside and all my outside plants are doing great. So if there is a good reason for that, like it gives me cancer, please let me know. Um, otherwise, feel free to follow along and do what I do. There's about a half a teaspoon-ish of the neem oil in this. And this is 1500 milliliters, um, and then it has two drops, literally two drops of the Dawn dish, dish soap. Like, I put the stuff in, and then I started pouring the water in. It doesn't even foam. Like, it doesn't get all sudsy. And that's what I always tell people with the Dawn dish soap attack pattern, is if you're going to do it, um, make sure it's super diluted, at least to start with. But anyways, I'm just going to give a quick spritz to all three of these plants here. Um, and I have this on a pretty wide spray pattern, which means it'll be a very fine mist, which means it will coat everything very evenly. You want to spray it until it starts to drip. That way you know it is completely damp. <coughs> but there's the smell. And like I said, this is not even maybe half a teaspoon in 1,500 milliliters. It's probably less than the recommended ratio, um, but I always just like to play it safe. So I've got pretty much all of those leaves covered. I want to make sure you get down here into the stems, especially with, um, not so much with um, scale or mealybugs. They're not as bad at getting into the crooks and crevices. Spider mites are the worst. You can get all of the ones that you can see off of a plant, but there's going to be one and it's going to be hiding down in this tiny little crevice that you will never be able to get to without cutting your plant in half. And you're just going to have to come to peace with that because he's never going away. Um, so now I'm going to do the Dracaena marginata uh, or dragon tree. Some of you might know it as that. And this, we're going to take a very top down approach. Again, I am in my Lego gallery, so I don't have carpet in here. If you did have carpet, you might want to be somewhat conscious just of how much drip there is. Because um, if this stuff gets in your carpet, it's not going to stain and it will come out. But that's just a smell you're going to have to deal with until you can steam clean your carpets. So bear that in mind. Or just don't use the neem oil, just use the Dawn dish soap. That is an option and honestly that has been very successful for me in the past. So here we are going to spray the leaves especially. Now I have confessions actually already sprayed this about oh, two weeks ago so honestly this problem was already starting to get under control I think. So that's just it's super quick with the right sprayer just and you're done. Um, <coughs> God it's all so bad. 
this is one thing I see a lot of people like in the different forums and the different groups on Facebook and Instagram. I see people raving about neem oil, and it is great. It does work very well and very effectively um, when used correctly. But I don't think enough people warn other people about the smell. It's such a bad smell, and I think I got a little bit in my nose. That was the second step, is spraying with a mild insecticide. Let's move on to the third step. And before I move on to the third step, I do want to say this is a very labor-intensive, very aggressive approach to pest control. For the most part, step two is all you need to do. If you have aphids or spider mites, this is all you should have to do. So I'm going to move on to showing you how to apply the diatomaceous earth, and I'm only going to use the DE on the citrus tree, the lemon tree, excuse me, because um, the other two, it's not necessary. They don't really have an infestation. I got this a week ago from a store that I have not been to before, and I'm not saying that the stores I go to all the time have never given me a pest-riddled plant, but it is a new store. It's an organic store, so I know that their pest control methods are probably um, not as aggressive as a big box store or as a more commercial nursery. Um, so I just want to make sure this thing doesn't have any residual underlying pest problems. That's why I brought that in here, and then this one I brought in because I bet you have one or another variety of Josena or you've had one in the past and you gave up because it got spider mites. Because that's the thing with these, is they get spider mites. So I'm going to move this one in front of us here. I'm also going to reposition the camera so you can actually see. Okay, so I hope you can actually see the top of the soil here. And I just grabbed a spoon. You can use your hands on this, you can use a measuring cup, it doesn't matter. The ratios are not terribly important. It is, it's used in farming as a soil additive. Um, so it's, it's absolutely safe to handle. Um, if you're going to be working with it a lot, like maybe on an industrial level, maybe wear a, a mask just so you don't breathe in too many particles. Um, but otherwise it is pretty safe to handle. And we're just gonna get a big heaping spoon we are going to cover, that's not going to be fast enough for my taste. And the reason I'm doing this is because a whole bunch of those scale insects fell off. And I think a lot of people use this in the wrong way and they just kind of lightly dust it like confectionery sugar over like a cake or something like that. And you need a pretty significant layer because it does not compact. It is so light and delicate, it does not compact at all. So that was a very in-depth look at three different pest control options. I'm, I, I really want to emphasize, I am not a professional. I do not have any sort of license or background in pest control. I just have way too many houseplants, and occasionally insects get inside and take advantage of them. So I have become good-ish at keeping pests under control. I will say, use what you feel is best for your household. You can use any one of these steps by themselves. That is an option. You can also reverse the order. You can totally do diatomaceous earth, let that sit for a week, and then do everything else. You can do, what I actually did in reality was I came in sprayed this heavily with my insecticide mix with the neem oil and the Dawn dish soap and now I'm here again about a week and a half later and I did the very thorough q-tip up and down sprayed again and now I've applied the diatomaceous earth. So you can use whatever is best for you. If you found this video helpful or if you have any corrections that are um, good information to share and to know or something that I maybe spoke incorrectly or that is bad information, please let me know. Um, I always like to dialogue and hear different opinions. Um, and if you have any additional suggestions on pest control, definitely drop those in the comments. I really hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you learned something, and if not, I hope you don't mind me babbling. 
thank you for watching. Um, I hope to see you next time. And of course, please remember to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook and here on YouTube. I think those are the only three places we have so far. Now I'm babbling. Bye! If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our new videos. You can also follow us on social media at RainbowGuysDIY for even more content. See you next time!